Ain't Slayed Nobody is a produced actual play podcast intended for adults and may contain material that some people find disturbing. Please see the episode notes for content warnings and listen with care. Hey there, everybody. Colin Mockery from Whose Line Is It Anyway here, international comedy icon and, of course, role model to pretty much everyone living on the planet as we know now. What is going on? I have been asked by uh, Scott to welcome you all to the Halloween game. All made by Scott. And, of course, this is nothing like a cult. Just because a group of people get together following the rantings of one person, Scott, does not make this a cult. (laughs) Um, I know you're uh, into a horror, uh, Green Pumpkins, and you call yourselves um, the Wolf Pack. So much to unravel there. So much. Um, I hope you have a wonderful game. I hope it all goes well. I hope it does not end in bloodshed. Have a great Halloween. And remember, don't trust Scott. Don't trust Scott. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god yes words to live by oh, that's amazing that's my hero all right so thank you colin mockery paid fan of the show now <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh god yeah i needed that I, th- I think we should just wrap things up there we'll never get to top that <laughs> <laughs> got stabbed in my back more than once or twice it felt like some would love to see me give up on, give up on my own dreams. Halloween can't come soon enough. My mask is starting to fade. Written in the stars is my life. So what are we playing today, Scott? Those lovely people on the Ain't Slayed Nobody Discord gave us a whole bunch of suggestions, and then we had a vote amongst all the listeners as to which suggestions for topics sounded the most interesting. Cup sent me a list of the top ten. I've winnowed them down a bit to ones that I think that I can do something with. I still don't know how I'm going to bring any of them in, but, well, let's find out. I think in honour of our top suggestion, this episode should be called Totally Not a Cult Gathering. (laughs) So just to set things up, I mean, we've had a little discussion ahead of time, and when I say little, I am not overselling this. (laughs) We know that... You are playing members of the Duncan family who are on a family trip, a holiday, to somewhere in rural Maine. And that is pretty much as far as we've got with our discussions. (laughs) So do do you want to introduce Mm. the various Duncans who are on this road trip? We can just go in the order on screen again if you want to start, Joe. Yeah, well, I'm Silas Duncan. I'm the family patriarch, as it were. (laughs) I, I like fishing and boats and being on the sea, and uh, I, I'm hoping that we're going to get lots of that in this adventure. Are you in your 70s or so? Because I have myself in my 50s. I am 79. <laughs> <laughs> With a size of 80. <laughs> Pepperidge Farm also remembers that. I love this accent. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be Russian, but apparently that's not allowed in a Duncan family. <laughs> well, you could be Russian. I think that's, that would be cool. I am patriarch of, of Duncan families. <laughs> what are you talking about? Of course we are Russian. We are Russian Duncanoffs. We are spies. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we almost got through one introduction before going off the rails. <laughs> How about you, Rena? All right, so I'm playing Dusty Duncan. Silas's granddaughter and 
Lincoln's uh, daughter, 19, studying uh, history and acting at a local community college and waitressing on the side. Very unenthused about this entire trip because I have so many books I could be reading right now. And God, why do I have to go with all of these people and my stupid brother? And ugh, I hate the woods. I felt some out of character stuff going on there. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go to Wes next. Yeah, I'm Francis Gerald Duncan. Uh, you know, I'm a 17-year-old aspiring musician. I'm uh, looking forward to this road trip as much as I can because uh, I'm going to see a lot of the countryside of uh, these great United States of America. And I, I'm, I'm in the mood of writing a good old concept album to kind of bring everybody together uh, through the uh, act of drinking beer and red dirt and uh, farm equipment. I am Lincoln's son and Silas's grandson, and I'm just real stoked to be here. Okay, I am Lincoln Duncan, and I am, uh, I don't, what my, the Russian thing got in my head, and I fucking cannot <laughs> shake it. <laughs> I love it. Keep it up. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm guessing at some point, Lincoln had a head injury and yeah. just developed foreign accent syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Let me rewind it. Um, I'm I'm Lincoln Duncan and uh, Silas's boy. I, I was raised uh, in the Maritimes. My father was a fisherman. My mother was a fisherman's friend, of course. And uh, I moved from the Mar Maritimes down the Turnpike to Sweet New England. And uh, I, I, th I think this vacation is going to bring me close to my teenage home. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I have two kind of rascal children, Dusty and Francis. You know, I thought it would be good to get the whole family together and, and go on an adventure and, you know, get everyone out of the boredom of the chowder and the chowder. <laughs> Fucking chowder. Chowder. <laughs> <The> chowder. <laughs> Scott's losing sanity by the, by the second. <laughs> Scott, we do have a lot of different gear and possessions from the chat that we could have in our packs. Uh, I thought I might give a couple items to everybody. Okay. Why the fuck not? Silas has a raw T-bone steak <laughs> and, and aluminum foil. <laughs> <laughs> Dusty has a staple remover. And <laughs> an Optimus Prime toy. I don't know what that is. An Optimus Prime toy? It's a Transformer. What do you mean you don't know what that is? Trucks that turn into big robots. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let me give you a different item, actually, if you don't know Optimus Prime. So a staple remover and super glue is what you have. Useful for shutting my brother up. <laughs> Francis is going to have a second smaller backpack inside his backpack. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> and the entire Rush discography on CD. Okay. <laughs> I have a fistful of Monopoly dollars from the original edition. <laughs> and a gold Sharpie. I'm sure we'll find wonderful uses for these things. <laughs> So, to set the scene then, it is autumn. Well, it's coming up to Halloween. In fact, why not say that it is Halloween? And you have gone out on this road trip as a family together. You've made a booking on the internet for a b, &B which, given everyone's love of the sea and fishing and so on, sounds like the absolute perfect place for you in coastal Maine, a place called Lonely Lighthouse. You've put the address into your sat-nav, and for the past 20 minutes, it's been taking you steadily inland. And you're now driving through farmland. Uh, you've, you've gone through some cornfields. I'm assuming they grow corn in Maine. If not, they do now. <laughs> and... <laughs> they grow uh, lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but but now you've moved past that and you can see a big farmhouse up ahead and surrounding it there's what looked like 
large pumpkin patches growing. There are, you know, fairly ripe-looking gourds all around. There are a few people out tending them, dressed in white clothes and hats, uh, tending the fields. <laughs> There's uh, a few other people doing repairs around the house. It's a big old, probably farmhouse, uh, with a few outbuildings. And as you're driving up, everyone is stopping and looking at you fairly openly. Outsiders. Outsiders. <laughs> what color were those pumpkins? The pumpkins are largely orange. There are a few green ones there, just still ripening. <laughs> but most of them do look right. I, I assume this was on the coast. Uh, Francis, you found this booking, didn't you? Did it say anything about a farm? Yeah, Dad, it, it, it said there was a farm there, and you know you know what I'm doing. You know I'm trying to write some music, and I wanted to get you know acquainted with farm life up north, and it looks like these northerners here are dressing weird. Music. Don't don't mock what I do. You <laughs> act. <laughs> oh. I act better than you music. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that doesn't say much because you suck. <laughs> Look, I'm going to pull over this car because we're at our destination, but also because you're pissing me off. Oh, look, Dad's flexing. <laughs> don't fight in front of your grandfather. <laughs> no, he's very sensitive. Oh, what was that now? He taught us to fight. Grandfather pulls out a pair of headphones. He's listening to some music. <laughs> Sweet Caroline. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this doesn't look quite right. I thought we were going to the sea. I packed my fishing gear. Hey, you there. And he shouts at the nearest person. Uh, where are we? Are we near the sea? This middle-aged man with uh, fairly white fluffy hair or grey fluffy hair, curly hair sticking out in all random directions and a pair of small round glasses walks up to you and uh, says, oh, hello, are you lost? What's that? Speak up. Are you lost? No, we're not lost. I just asked you if we're near the sea. He looks around. There is no sea to be seen. <laughs> not very helpful around here, are they? Right, let me see if I can find a map. He starts like fishing under the sea. Do you not, you not keep a map under the sea, boy? Maps are so 1990s, Granddad. Well, that's why we never got lost in the 1990s. We used a map. Anyway, where did. God damn it. What are you trying to find? A map. Didn't you hear me? <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> He did say he was fishing for the map, so maybe he could use those <laughs> skills. <laughs> the man's broad, amiable smile does look a little narrower and less amiable as, as the conversation goes on. We're trying to find a lighthouse. A lighthouse. We're staying in a lighthouse. Ah, this is Lonely Lighthouse. So are you here for Halloween? Oh, they're in costumes. Oh, no. Oh, wait, ain't you an actress? Don't you like costumes? <laughs> but not for Halloween. It's just so childish. Oh, look, look, my name's Dusty. I think everything's stupid. Well, at least I grew up, Francis. Oh, did you grow up? Are you, are you a whole two ass years older than me? Oh, wow, look at you. Tell me, what do you know, a wise and aged one? <laughs> I, I apologize for my father, but this... Uh, you don't need to apologize for me. I apologize for myself when I say something that needs apologizing for. It's fine. Here. Oh, oh, look, I found some peanut butter crackers. Here. Uh, here you go, Dad. <laughs> I'm not a dog. <laughs> what are you trying to just feed Grandpa? What is your problem, Dad? <laughs> you know the doctor told me not to eat so much. I've got to lose weight. You don't feed me any peanut butter crackers. <laughs> they're they're organic. It's fine. Francis, you remember to hide the sardines, right? <laughs> no, I didn't remember to hide the sardines. I love it when Grandpappy eats. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, sir, this lone, why is there a lighthouse here? We haven't seen any water for uh, 30 miles. Ah, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll find Mother Brenda, shall I, and she can explain everything to you. That would be wonderful. Mother Brenda? Oh my god. Maybe they're preparing for global warming. <laughs> you know, the lighthouse will eventually be here when it needs to be here. <laughs> I, 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 he's walking away, but as, as, as you say that, he turns and stops and gives you a big wink. 
and then carries on walking back towards the house. That was weird. Well, if we're here, we're here. Maybe we should all get out then. I, I, I need to go spend a penny. Did he wink? He winked. <laughs> that was a weird wink, wasn't it? It wasn't like a stage wink. And that was way worse than your acting wink. Your acting <laughs> winks are like real like, ah. I mean, his was like terrible. <laughs> I feel like Lincoln's been driving like two miles per hour across this land and they've been talking to this guy as he's walking alongside the car. <laughs> been driving with a parking brake on. <laughs> Is there a little place I can park in front of the farmhouse? Yeah, there's there's plenty of empty space there. There are a couple of trucks and a few cars parked there already. All right, kids. Uh Help your grandfather get out of the car and get situated, and we'll figure out what's going on here. We need to find a fishing hole or something, or he's going to go mad. Francis walks around to the other side of the car and opens the door and extends his hand to, to Grandpappy and begins to pull. Oh, you got to get the seatbelt first. <laughs> Not if you pull hard enough. <laughs> sure. Come on now. <laughs> I went Jeremiah there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Grandpappy. Hang on there. Hang on there. All right. Fine. I'm ready now. Pull. <laughs> yeah. uh. what, what are you trying to extricate Grandpa from the car? The man you spoke to earlier comes out, and he's accompanied by um, a fairly short, round woman with iron-gray hair and, and bright blue eyes, who seems to have pretty much the same smile as he has. And uh, she she wanders over to the car and says, uh, "Oh, hello! I I hear that you've come to stay with us. Is that right? Did you make a booking?" Francis, do you have that on your phone or Dusty? Dad, I sent you the email four times to keep it at the top of your inbox. Now, what in the hell could you have done to lo lose it? And pulls out his phone and uh, could you bubble that to the top of my inbox again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to show it to her because I got it. All right, Daddy? Okay. Yeah, that's good. She she takes the phone off you and pulls out <laughs> a pair of reading glasses, looks at it and says, oh. I didn't say you could touch my phone. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't ask permission before doing so. Uh, yeah, puts on a pair of reading glasses and, and squints at the screen and says, oh, oh, yes. Yes, you do have a booking. Oh, we don't normally take books bookings at this time of year that well that must have been a mistake we i mean we do we do rent rooms through most of the year but halloween not usually but oh have you come a long way so fucking long oh you poor dear we don't know from where but we're here <laughs> it was definitely somewhere south of here and it took a long damn time <laughs> Well, I, I suppose we can find room for you. We are a bit full up, but uh, as long as you don't mind sharing a room, I'm sure we can accommodate you. Uh, well, with each other or with some of these guys in the dresses? <laughs> well, it's it's up to you, I, I, I suppose. It, yes, I mean, if you're happy to, to share with, with some of our other residents, yes, you, you'd be perfectly welcome to do that. We're a very welcoming group here. I haven't shared a bedroom since I was five, shooting daggers at, at Francis. Oh. When I was young, I shared a bedroom with four sisters and seven brothers. You should feel yourself lucky. Although it got mighty cozy in the winter, which was a, it was a, it was a really good thing, to be honest, because it got mighty cold. <laughs> it's like Grandpa Joe and Willy Wonka. <laughs> 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 yeah, how many people stay in a room here, ma'am? Oh, it depends on the room, but uh, we do have a, an awful lot of people staying with us at the moment. Uh, I thought you said you didn't book rooms, ma'am. Well, this is, I suppose you'd call it a, a charter booking. Like a plane or a boat? Oh, his eyes light up. <laughs> Grandpa, I don't think they get boats out here. <laughs> Well, of course they get boats out here. They'll be like a lake or a pond or a puddle or something. You got boats out here, haven't you, lady? <laughs> puddle. We we do have a pond out back, yes. Well, there you go. There, I told you, Dusty. We'll go. Well, we'll go check into our rooms, and then we'll, you can show us this pond. Is it like a duck tour? We take the bus, and then it turns into a boat kind of situation. Yeah, man, those sound fun. Uh, no. 
Good. We'll, we'll take a room for four, I think. Let's just... Can we stick together here? Sure. G- give me a moment. She turns around to the man and says, uh, 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 Brother Silas, would you go and see whether you could arrange for perhaps some of the other brethren to, to move around and accommodate our new friends? She talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, what do you know? My name's Silas as well. Oh, really? He says. Ironically, it means the youngest one. That's what that name means. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other Silas looks at you and says, I can tell we're going to be great friends. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, go on, boy, lead the way. You can tell me all about it. At least Gramps has someone to keep him occupied. Are they calling each other brother? Uh-huh. Are you all related here? Is this like a family reunion? Who, who are you asking, Mother Brenton? The the woman. Yes. Uh, I, she say, she looks thoughtful for a moment and says, I, I suppose you could call it something like that, yes. <laughs> okay, but like, what would you literally call it? <laughs> um... I, I suppose he'd call us, uh, friends. Are you... Like Quakers? Yeah, Mennonites, something like that? Pennsylvania Dutch? No, no not exactly. No, Lincoln, look at what they're wearing. It's like that Midsummer film you tried to show me on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, I didn't last five minutes on that one. <laughs> no, neither did I. It seemed nice and friendly at the beginning, though. <laughs> you just didn't appreciate... The quality of the storytelling in that movie. It was brilliant. Honestly, they started taking drugs and I turned it right off. You don't need any of that. You just need good living to make your day a good day. I'm fishing. Mm. Dusty, you showed that trash to Grandpa? Mm, I tried to. I had to watch it for school. It was a project. (sighs) For her acting. I told you, he's squeamish. Honestly... It was a lot better than that one you showed me about that girl who had her head knocked off. Which one, Gramps? There was like three of them. No, there was one you showed me about like a whole tribe who lived down in the hills and they all wore white robes. Oh, that one. And then there was one you showed me about a girl who had her head knocked off. What's that? Death becomes her? (laughs) No, they were in like a car. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good one. I love that one. (laughs) You said they were related or something. Well, at least we're not getting into any kind of children of the pumpkin situation. It's hard to get lost in a pumpkin patch. <laughs> I don't know. Charlie Brown would have something to say about getting lost in a pumpkin patch, Dusty, or you not paying attention to the peanuts growing up. Not anymore. That's for kids. D- Dusty pulls a backpack full of really heavy books, uh, ostentatiously full of heavy books, out of the back of the car. <laughs> it's like, mm, well, at least I'm studying something useful. <laughs> Francis, are these rooms refundable? <laughs> Are you having this conversation while walking into the house? Yeah, I think Silas has got is like got his arm around Silas and is list, like shouting behind him at his kids and <laughs> grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to keep up with Grandpa. <laughs> so yes, he, he go inside. Have you seen Midsummer, Silas? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I don't get to watch a lot of films. Oh, well, he should. It was really good. Well, at least the first ten minutes. Did he say get to? Yeah, I think he said get to. That's weird. It sounds like permission. Mm Mm-hmm. And as you go inside, you can see that there are a few more people bustling around the house. You you can make out the doorway to the kitchen, and there are a number of people there who seem to be preparing a meal or something. Uh, It certainly looks like a hive of activity. Uh, There's a doorway to your left that looks like it's going into some kind of common room or living room. And there's a man who's sitting there beside an old-fashioned valve radio. And he's got his ear pressed to the speaker. Uh, You can't hear any music playing or anything like that. And that's not Grandpa. (laughs) (laughs) Mother Brenda says... uh, why don't you just wait in the common room for a little bit while we sort out your room for you? I'll see whether I can get some tea for you. Would you like some tea? We we have herbal tea. It's, it's, it's lovely. You got a Coke or something? Yeah, black coffee, please. Oh, no, no, no. We, we don't drink anything like that. Oh, they're like the Jehovah's Witnesses. I've got it. 
Do you have Lipton, like black tea with lemon flavoring? <sighs> no, no, no. We do have some of Margaret's special pumpkin tea. <laughs> oh, God. Just a glass of milk for me. Got any Neil Diamond music? <laughs> <laughs> Go ask the guy listening to the Valve radio. <laughs> While this is going on, Silas has wandered over to this guy doing the radio and he's like peering over his shoulder. I used to have one of them like that, just on my boat. Only really picked up truckers, though. You'd hear the sort of nonsense they'd say while they were driving on through the day and the night. You wouldn't believe. What are you trying to tune into, boy? He looks up at you sideways. He doesn't take his ear away from the, the speaker and just places one finger to his lips. Quiet. What's that, boy? Speak up. And he ignores you and just plugs his, his finger in his other ear. Well, that's not right, boy. If you wanted to go louder... You gotta twizzle these things, and you'll reach over and grab one of the dials. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you twiddle one of the knobs, and there is a sudden blast of static, and this young man jumps up, in uh, uh, clutching his other ear. Uh, uh, you can see for a moment the absolute fury on his face as he's looking at, at Silas, and then. He takes a deep breath and he, he smiles at you and says, Brother, please, I have duties to attend to, and, and taps you on the shoulder. I'll, I'll, I'll play with your radio while you go do your duties then. And he'll sit down in the seat he's now vacated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, at, look at Granddad making friends. The, he, the, the man looks panicked for a moment. And, I mean, at this stage, Mother Brenda comes back in and and he, he just about runs over to her and says, uh, is, is, is he taking over my duties? Is he listening for the signal? Oh, God. <laughs> Mother Brenda smiles and, and walks over and says, uh, um, Mr. Duncan, sir, uh, would, would he be so kind as to perhaps sit somewhere else? Uh, Dan here, Brother Dan, has um, a special interest which he's trying to follow at the moment, and he needs to listen to the radio in order to do that. At this point, Silas has got one earphone in, and she turns around, looks at her, and goes, Shh! <laughs> <laughs> what you hearing, Grandpa? <laughs> I'm not hearing anything yet. Dusty's looking at Francis and mouthing, The signal? Hey, here you go. I found you some truckers. Look, here you go. I can hear them. Uh, can, can you give me a power roll, please? Oh, God. <laughs> First roll of the game. Yay! That is a 20 versus my power of what, more than 20. <laughs> Are you sure? Uh, 50. Hard success. Yeah. Okay, you do hear what sounds like a whispering uh, coming through the static on the radio. It's, I mean, it's not quite tuned into a channel. You haven't been able to find a channel. But you can hear, maybe it's just your brain picking up patterns in the static, or maybe it is a voice whispering there. And it's just saying, Prepare the light. Prepare the light. Prepare the light. This is damn strange. I've never heard a trucker talking about preparing any lights and things. Normally they're talking about, you know, hookers at gas stations and... <laughs> Granddad, language. That's what my next album's about, Grandpa. I'd like to hear that. <laughs> Brother Dad and Mother Brenda look at each other uh, excitedly uh, as you're talking about that. And they, is that what you heard there, Silas? Uh, prepare the light. Don't crowd me. Don't I let. Hang on. Let me twiddle a bit more. I'll tell you what I hear. He's he's, he's like a trucker guy. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you. She says, Silas. Thank you. Maybe it's not an accident that you came here. Maybe, maybe it's for the best that we forgot to update the website. Oh, oh we are so happy to have you here. What kind of business is it you do here? Ma'am? Uh, farming mostly, and obviously the, the bed and breakfast. And the. What's the light? The light? I suppose you could call it an old folk belief, but 
we we believe that there is, I suppose, something about the symbolism of a lighthouse, a, a light that shines in the darkness, both as a, a warning and maybe as a beacon. And, well, there are certain times when the lighthouse must be lit. And at this time of year... Right, no offence, Sister Brenda. If your lighthouse is going to be figurative rather than physical, you want to put that there on your website? Yes, good good point, Dad. Uh, this is a uh, bait and switch, and we want a refund. <laughs> <laughs> but we will be staying the night. <laughs> Tell him, Dad. Yes, thank you, Francis. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure we can come to some kind of arrangement, yes. Yes, I mean, after the service you've done here. Yes, it's the least we can do to have you stay here as our guests. Yes, all, all, all your fees will be refunded. Service? Good. Is there any way you could refund that in cash? I know we used a card <laughs> uh, to, to pay, but... You're pushing it, Dad. I thought you got out of the money laundering business, Dad. I'm a fisherman, okay? That's what we do. <laughs> Is launder money? There's a lot of time to think out on the boats. Schemes just pop into our brains. What can I say? I would think that fishermen fish. Ah, I think I know what your problem is. Hey, you haven't got a proper aerial. I'm going to take the side off this radio and I'm going to try and fashion an aerial out of aluminium foil and a T-bone steak. See if I can get some AM radio. <laughs> I'm going to hand him the super glue. Like, it'll probably stick better if you use this. Honestly, I'd rather have an Optimus Prime toy if I could choose, but I think we'll have to do. <laughs> Dad wouldn't let us watch TV when we were growing up, so like, I, I don't know these words. That's not fair, Dusty. Remember the Sunday morning bass boat show? We, we watched that as a family. I used to rouse you out of bed at 6 a.m. and we watched the bass fishing. God damn it, don't bring that up again, Dad. <laughs> My therapist is getting so much money out of that. Look at her. I'm in therapy and I'm an actor. I'm a trope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a trope, am I? Mr. 17-year-old musician drops out of high school, doesn't go to college, has very ill-suited tattoos and a nose ring. <laughs> And Russia's entire discography. <laughs> yeah, but that trope's getting paid by a lot of idiots right now. <laughs> <laughs> Francis, I know you're into some uh, odd shit. Is is this some kind of cult, in your opinion? <laughs> uh, it doesn't not look like a cult. It's not not a cult. <laughs> that, that I can tell you that. I've been watching a lot of stuff on Netflix about cults, and this looks culty. <laughs> okay, looks culty. You won't watch them with me when I ask, but you'll watch them on your own. I see how it is. No, because you pause it and go like, am I nailing the role of a cult member? And then you do some bullshit act out. <laughs> make me want to jump out the window. This is why we stick to the bass fishing shows. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, ma'am, that reminds me, is the pond out back stocked by any chance? We'd love to do some fishing while we're here. No, I don't know. No. I don't know what you'd catch there, but you're welcome to try. So not stopped. <laughs> Maybe you'll have better luck if you wait until night time. Night time? What? I was thinking at daybreak or something, or right before dawn. Uh, is there any way we could just sit Grandpa out there in a in a chair and make him think that it's stocked? Mother Brenda looks round as you say that. I assume he can hear me. <laughs> I rolled 97 on my electrical repair roll to set this up. <laughs> I have 10%. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think at this stage, some some juices from the steak have dripped into the radio and it is now sparking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's gone from that hiss of static to this screeching voice just going, Prepare the lights! Prepare the lights! I, I apologise, I was trying to get... A truck or I don't know what this is. It's some Jesus radio. Now we're never going to get any music. Mother Brenda looks shocked and says, uh, uh, Father Silas, oh, we, we do not allow meat in this house. Well, I apologize and I'll, I'll grab the T-bone steak and like bite the remaining meat off the bone. <laughs> Just <laughs> cleans it like a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you don't allow meat? We are devout vegetarians. 
Francis? Francis? What the fuck? Except for ceremonial purposes, that is. Oh, like some kind of meat trade. <laughs> Excuse me? If I can just take that and dispose of it safely, Father Silas, is, is that all right? No, cook that. No, of course not. You don't take a man's steak. Yeah, tell him, Dad. She smiles as if you've agreed and plucks it out of your hand. She's going to have to roll for brawl if she wants to get this steak out of hand. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's have an opposed brawl roll to see whether you can hold off your steak. Oh, my God. I rolled a 91. <laughs> I rolled a 98. That's a fumble. <laughs> so, so I think in the process of the tussle, you have accidentally rammed the bone of the steak into Mother Brenda's palm. It's just sticking in there. Uh, there's blood pouring out of the hole there. And, and she's just looking at it in shock, saying, this is precisely why we don't allow meat, she says, and faints. Because people st tend to stab each other with with their steaks? Yeah, I've never seen that before. There are a number of the white-robed figures who are now running over in alarm. Go, Mother Brenda! Mother Brenda! What, what have you done to Mother Brenda? What have you done? She fainted. So he's got his hands up going, She just grabbed my steak. You saw what happened. Everyone's coming. You saw me, Lincoln, didn't you? You saw it. This is unnecessary. Please, just... Uh, Give us some space. Let us get settled. This is... Uh, you're making us very uncomfortable here. Yeah, y'all gotta back off. They're ignoring you at the moment. They're all kneeling down, pretty much pushing each other away, just tending to Mother Brenda and making sure she's all right. Move aside. I'll help her. Move aside. And, I mean, Silas is enormous. He's like strength 70, size 80. And he's just going to shift shift everybody and he's going to attempt to roll first aid. <laughs> I'll get that thing out. Don't worry. Don't worry. So I can help you. I've seen this happen before during an eating competition. Someone got a bit too handy and well, it went straight into his hand, as it were. <laughs> that is a 35 versus my first aid of 40. Success. Okay. So, yeah, you, you can get the bone out without doing any more damage and staunch the bleeding. I'm going to pocket the steak. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> Dad's on the case. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> now, now that it's nice and juicy again with Mother Brenda's blood, Mother Brenda begins to stir again a bit. She says, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure what came over me there. I, I, it's probably not eating meat for a long time. You just saw a steak and couldn't control yourself. I understand it. I've been that way before myself. You're probably anemic. You need to get some iron supplementation going on. I should get this bandage, she says. Oh, she's ignoring you completely, just muttering about bandages and walks off in the direction of the kitchen. There are about a dozen of the totally not occult members standing in the living room as she wanders off, just looking at you angrily. Uh, everything's under control, folks. My dad took care of it. Uh, probably some kind of army, navy training. Navy, most likely. Coast Guard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lifeguard, actually. <laughs> Do you want to give me a persuade, fast talk, or charm roll, Cup? Oh, no, I don't want to give you any of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have good persuade. Never mind. Uh, I have 70, so. I rolled two D10s, so I'll just call it a 37 then, because that's how I saw it. Okay. So, yeah, they look at you with a bit of hostility, but there's there's murmuring amongst the ranks, and they begin to dissipate. See, kids, that's how you talk to people. You don't mutter shit behind their backs and under your breath. You just got to talk to them. Yeah, whatever, Dad. You don't chant in the dark woods under a full moon. Dusty, what the fuck? If we just stuck to the bass shows, you kids wouldn't be so fucked. Francis, it's a cult. Of course they chant in the dark woods under a full moon. There's one of the totally not occult members who's walking out and overhears this and looks back and says, Don't be silly. There aren't any woods around here. All right. In the pumpkin patch, then? Let's not give him ideas. <laughs> he just shakes his head and walks off. Can Lincoln follow Brenda into the kitchen to apologize for Silas insincerely? <laughs> sure. Time to die, Cup. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just want to try to smooth it over uh, with Brenda. Yeah. If that was her name. I think it was. Like 90210. It was. <laughs> yes, Mother Brenda. So reference 90210. <laughs> Brenda Walsh. Uh, <laughs> cutting edge pop cultural references here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Try to transform. <laughs> so yeah, I just want to follow Mother Brenda. Maybe even like pull on her dress or her robe to get her attention. Okay. Uh, well, uh, by the time you catch up with her and you, you force your way through the dispersing, totally not a cold members, she's in the kitchen running her hand under some cold water, and one of the women is bringing some cloth over. You can see the others are busy. They're, they're chopping vegetables. There's what appears to be you know, a series of pumpkin pies in the making, some salads, and there's there's what smells like quite a, a tasty stew uh, on the go at the moment. Hmm. Okay. Well, a tasty vegetarian stew. I'm not sure, Scott. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, was it was it Belinda? I, I just wanted to <laughs> kind of stop through, stop in the kitchen and apologize for my father's behavior back there. Uh, even though he did an ace job, kind of patching you up. Uh, I, I feel like we got off on the wrong foot with you, with our family just kind of storming in and demanding things from our room and refunds and things like that. So, if you could just maybe get us set up with some fishing, I don't. We don't really want to wait until night. If we could just get dad out in front of the pond in a chair, I think everything would calm down and, and we could just kind of relax and enjoy the night. Uh, yes, of course. Yes, there's some porch furniture around the back on the decking there. You could perhaps take some of that down to the next to the pond. And yes, if that's going to keep your, your father happy, then uh, we, we want everyone here to be happy. Oh, good. I'm glad you said that. Do you have some Game Boys or something that we could give to the kids? Because they seem to be getting a little riled up. Uh, no. Some Pictionary, maybe? No, that's a shame. Uh, no, we don't really have anything like that here. Okay. Don't you think it's important to try to be as happy as you can? Because you never know when all of this is going to come to an end, do you? Okay. Uh... So, do you have your own fishing gear? <laughs> We do. We do have our own fishing gear. I'm <laughs> backing out of the kitchen now. Yeah, we just want to be happy here for this one day that we're staying. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Yes. One one day is all any of us can really hope for, isn't it? <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. Do you mind? And I'm going to gesture to the pumpkin pie to see if maybe I can get a slice. Is it a green pumpkin pie? It's not baked yet. It's it's waiting to go in the oven. Oh, okay. Well, the spread looks delicious. Uh, we'll uh, maybe we'll see you around supper time. We're gonna do our own thing for a while. Oh yes, yes. You, you're you're welcome to join us for uh, for the meal tonight. I'm I'm afraid it's going to be a very communal meal, and there'll be a lot of sharing. But as as long as you join us in the spirit in which it's intended, then yes, you are perfectly welcome to join us listen we're not that kind of family we're not gonna put our keys in the jar or whatever it is you do here but but we will join you for dinner and Jesus. but not any of the ceremonial things that you have planned casual <laughs> knowledge of orgies <laughs> <laughs> listen i grew up in canada she laughs and taps you on the back of your, that, your hand and says, oh, You are silly. We, we, we don't do rites like that. and Not at this time of year. That would be completely inappropriate. And she walks off chuckling to herself. <laughs> That's a springtime thing. Right. This is a time for, well, for, for gathering in the fruits. Yeah. I'm going to return to the family. Our family. <laughs> Well, while you were doing that, Dusty was was going to pull Francis aside and be like, we should sneak around while Dad's not looking. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you. I bet this is a cult. Yeah, it feels like a cult. Let's go find out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we should go exploring. <laughs> we should. Just the two of us split the party. <laughs> yeah, just us by ourselves. Let's go. Is there an attic that we could get into? <laughs> Or a basement? Maybe a basement. That's better. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy. <laughs> We're going to sneak off and do some exploring. 
<laughs> oh, zoink, Scoob, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to try to find the basement. I, considering you're blundering around, I, I'm assuming you're opening doors at random, let's have a group luck roll between the two of you. So wh- whichever one of you has got the lower luck. Uh, I've got 80. What do you got? I got 70. All right, do it. Oh, blimey. I, I'm not used to investigators with this much luck. <laughs> <laughs> we used Dole's house for the, for the roll-up, and it gave us really good luck. All right, 68 under 70. That's a success. Okay, so, yeah, you... You look around the side of the kitchen where you think it would be logical to have a door down to the cellar, and sure enough, you see a, a, a flight of stairs down. <laughs> hey, I found it. Uh, rock, paper, scissors for who goes first. Okay, and then rock, paper, scissors. Bam. <laughs> One more time, we tied. One, two, three, go. I went paper. <laughs> what'd, you, what'd you roll? paper <laughs> oh well, shit i'll just go first <laughs> <laughs> we know each nice. other too well at this point francis you know it never works to play rock paper scissors when you've been living together for 17 years <laughs> that's right that's right that's right so francis goes down the stairs for if we and, and francis gets his cell phone out and clicks the flashlight on <laughs> yeah, that's good because you don't see anything that looks like a light switch. You're, you're going down these creaky wooden stairs into an earthen cellar, um, pushing your way through cobwebs because, of course, there are cobwebs. Doesn't look like people go down here that much. Maybe it's where they put the bodies. <laughs> well, then they're not killing that often because these cobwebs are thick, like you read about, you know? <laughs> well, you heard her say that they only eat meat on ceremonial occasions what do you suppose the meat they're eating is well that's a great question it could be goat sheep francis what is the weed addling your brain you crazy musician no the weed's in my pocket where it belongs (laughs) (laughs) i think they eat people well they may they may eat people but they had a pumpkin pie out who knows what's in that pumpkin pie (laughs) pumpkin it's in the it's in the name oh my god (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Just because you call something something doesn't mean that's what it actually is, musician. <laughs> okay, waiter. <laughs> well, I am actually that, thank you. <laughs> right, I know, I'm just, I'm just sticking with the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> so we go into the basement. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> well, you make your way down, and yeah, it's got an earth floor. It's, it smells of damp down here. You see that there are a few barrels, metal barrels, which are marked with uh, danger flammable on them. There are a few wooden crates of something that has got a, a strange symbol you don't recognize and writing in a language you don't recognize on them. There's a couple of racks of robes, and much like the, the ones you've seen people wearing around the farm. And that's really about it down here. You want you want to try these on? If Francis gestures at the robes, it's like maybe we could fit in. Brother Francis. Yeah, the, the the robes, by the way, the ones that are down here do look a bit mildewed. Like they've been down here for a while. Look, they're ready for the gas crisis. Gestures at the flammable. <laughs> we, we should look in the boxes. Oh, okay. Uh, if you want. Well, I'm going to look in one of the boxes. Is it another transformer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a whole box full of Optimus Primes. No, you you pull the lid open. It's it's loosely tacked shut, not properly nailed shut, so you can pull it open fairly easily. And inside there are. A few linen sacks that seem to be full of something. What kind of something? Well, well, if you open up one of the sacks... I do. It looks suspiciously like candy corn. Hi, candy corn. Happy Halloween. Francis grabs a handful and eats it. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, this isn't like any candy corn you've ever had before. There's something about the taste that's... It almost feels like licking a battery. It kind of sparks on your tongue and fizzles a bit. It is sweet and not completely unpleasant, but but yeah, there's that that weird sparking feeling as as you mush it around your mouth. 
It's like nine volt pop rocks. Like, I don't know what to tell you. It's just all like all fucked up and like, Mwah. like me. Try some. Hands <laughs> <laughs> the back over to Dustin. This isn't gonna be like the time you told me that you were giving me weed and it turned out to be glue, was it? Well, that's just because you're dumb enough to believe that Elmer's glue was marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> those are those are way different looking things, and, and I just thought it was funny as hell when you were like, "Is that weed?" And I looked at the glue and went, "Yeah." <laughs> uh, so I'll just shrug and reach in and take a handful of them, like they're candy corn. Okay, so you've you've both eaten some of the candy corn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but let's cut back upstairs to Lincoln, who has made arrangements to get his father somewhere to fish. Hey, hey, Dad. Uh, uh, Dad, where'd the kids go? Uh, oh, they're just right over. Um, uh, they said they were going hunting for... Uh, hunting? We're a fishing family. <laughs> That's a good point. I wasn't really listening. I was trying to fix this damn radio. I'm sure they're fine. I'm in there what last? Like, 14, 15 now, they're probably all right on their own. I wouldn't worry about them. Let's, let's look for the damn kids and then uh, that we can all go fishing together, maybe. What do you think? They probably went up to the attic, if I know them. Probably <laughs> looking for drugs or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon they're probably going out fishing before us. I think if we go get the gear, they'll be happy. They'll be waiting for us by the pond. That's what I suggest. Let's go and see if they're, they're there. But let's go get the fishing gear first. I'm, sh- I'm sure they're fine. Look, Dad, I've known you for 40 whatever years, 50 years, and uh, you always suggest going to look at the fishing hole first. <laughs> Anytime anything goes missing. Well, let me ask one of these other people. Maybe they saw where they got off to, at least before we get the gear. Uh, hey, hey, everybody. How many are there people <laughs> still in here, Scott? There were a few in the kitchen preparing the meal. The rest seem to have mm. gone outside to tend to the, the pumpkins and the other plants. Where did that Dan guy go? Brother Dan, is he, is he still upset that I still is ready? <laughs> <laughs> you don't see him at the moment. What we could do then is, okay, Dad, let's go outside and we'll ask somebody if they saw where the kids got off to while we're getting the gear together. Lincoln, you got to understand, the kids are absolutely fine. That you, you need to stop being such a helicopter parent. I read that somewhere. You need to give them a <laughs> longer leash. You don't know these kids. No. They are old <laughs> enough to understand what to eat, what not to eat, who to talk to, what not to talk to. Do you remember my upbringing at all? <laughs> exactly. I was too much of a helicopter parent. I stood right over you while you were cutting things with knives and burning things. I should have let you do that on your own. It would have ended up much, much better. I don't know. I think I turned out pretty well. Uh, yeah, I don't. let's go ask, see if somebody found them or saw them go outside, maybe. We'll get the gear. Boy, you're not listening. I told you, let them be. Let them have their long leash. We're on holiday, for Christ's sake. You're on holiday. Let's go enjoy some fishing. I don't, this is going to sound strange, but I don't, I'm not sure I trust these people here, dad. They seem a little off to me. Do you trust your kids? Not at all. Well, there's your problem. You need to. Yeah. You know, ever since whatever happened to their mom happened, I guess I've just been (laughs) a little more protective. I hear you, dad. Well, you got to let go whatever happened to her. Whatever it is haunts me. Whatever that was. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it actually was a helicopter accident. I wish you'd stop using that term. <laughs> she was shooting fish out of a helicopter. It didn't go well. Exactly. <laughs> Got too close to the barrel, and that was it. <laughs> now, leave the kids alone. Let's go get the dynamite from the car, and we can do some fishing. <laughs> fuck's sake <laughs> yeah you've given me a lot to think about maybe yeah let's let's take our mind <laughs> off things at the pond we just need to catch like maybe at four or five dozen fish yeah and let's cook them up ourselves i don't trust these people with meat i think so too and i think we should share them with that brenda lady she needs some meat dad you old dog <laughs> wow <laughs> we'll start heading out toward the the truck then i think if that's what we were in okay if you drove a truck, that's what you head out to. <laughs> I'm going to grab a pumpkin. I'm going to put a stick of dynamite in the pumpkin. You what? I mean, let's go back to this whole dynamite idea. 
Scott, I have 70% in fishing. You've got to trust me on this. <laughs> I think I want a group luck roll between you and Cup to see whether you actually brought any dynamite with you. And I really want you to fail. <laughs> I rolled a 20 against 45. That is a success. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and it's there in roll 20 if you don't believe me. Yep, we'll just get the, the one fishing pole and the dynamite. <laughs> And the sardines for bait, of course. <laughs> okay. And yeah, you, you head out to the back of the farm where uh, some of the totally not occult members have set up a couple of chairs for you beside this. Oh, yeah, it's not too small a pond. I mean, it's maybe about 20 feet across. Uh, it does look a bit scummy, maybe. Um, it certainly doesn't look like the the healthiest pond you've ever seen, and I guess it's getting cold, and there is a bit of ground fog or mist that is over the lake and the surrounding area, or the pond. Getting kind of a bad feel here, uh, which is usually good for fishing, as you know, Dad. I'm going to light the dynamite and throw the pumpkin dynamite into the pond. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to stop him. Can I do that? Not yet. We gotta do it. We gotta do it the old-fashioned way first. <laughs> oh my god, are you gonna blow cup up? Is that how this goes? <laughs> I think there's a good chance. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. You can give me an opposed dex roll. I have good dex. I have against sixty in dex. I get a oh god, I got an eighty-seven. I rolled a twelve on a seventy-eight, so that's extreme success. Okay, so I think you successfully grabbed the dynamite out of your father's hand just as he was bringing the lighter up to the fuse. It's it's in a pumpkin. Yeah, I got the whole. I'm holding the whole pumpkin with the dynamite here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you want to throw it in? I'm going to light the dynamite. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, One way or another, this dynamite's getting thrown. The thing is, I'd actually put points in throw, but I mean, good luck, Cup. <laughs> I don't even know uh, if if Lincoln's going to notice this because he's lecturing dad while he's holding the pumpkin. He's like, listen, dad, you cannot take the easy way out. That's what my damn kids do. We need to fish the old fashioned way. And then I realize it's lit and I try to throw it as far as I can into the pond. <laughs> okay. Well, give me a throw roll and don't fumble. Oh, God. I must be the base in this. Oh, I'm 40. Wow. Dullhouse hooked me up with this character. Okay. Oh, I rolled a 17. I'm rolling excellent here. That's a hard success. Oh, wow. Okay, so you throw the pumpkin into the misty water. You don't even hear a splash. And it just disappears. I guess the water put the fuse out. That's unusual. No, that's not right. There's something very odd going on. Is there, like, maybe, can we see the pumpkin? Is it floating? No, you can't. Hmm. Let me try to fish it out of there. <laughs> I'll get a fishing rod as well, and I'll help see if we can fish this pumpkin out. Okay. I'm going to put a a sardine on the hook just in case there's something biting in there. Oh, my God. I'm starting to feel okay about eating candy corn in the basement right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I, I get a 26 versus 70 on fishing. Okay. Uh, am I supposed... I don't have fishing. I have sea shanties. <laughs> Of course you do. <laughs> I have 15 in sea shanties. <laughs> sing. I need you to sing. That'll be good for TikTok. Oh, God. Do a sea shanty cup. Can I roll first? I want to hear about a weller man. Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Through the pumpkin in the pond <laughs> to see if we could find something from beyond. No. <laughs> Use the pole to get it back. <laughs> We are going to die. Yo ho! The, I don't know. <laughs> the pumpkin was green. <laughs> there was a pumpkin lit. It had some dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, you were going pumpkin fishing. Fuck that. I'm rolling sea shanties, Scott. <laughs> 73. <laughs> we're a choir now. This game's over. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that's it I'm writing down my next sea shanty <laughs> <laughs> okay you are listening to Ain't Slayed Nobody 
For ad-free episodes, heaps of bonus content, and special programming, please join our Patreon posse at patreon.com slash Slade, Or subscribe to Ain't Slade Nobody Plus at Apple Podcasts. See the show notes for full credits, and help us grow by posting friendly reviews and spreading the word to your friends and followers. Thank you, and good luck out there.